Hi, I'd like to share with you some tips about the intralace LASIK procedure. I had the procedure nine weeks ago in July of 2010. And now that it's nine weeks later, I have some information that I wish I had had before. To prepare for surgery, I did watch a number of videos on YouTube and they were really helpful, but they only talked about before surgery and the day of and you know, people filmed themselves for the first couple days, um, which was really great. But now that it's been nine weeks for me, I, I have some information that I think might be helpful for those of you who are considering LASIK or preparing to have the surgery. So I'll probably look down a couple times um, while, I, while I share with you, so forgive me, but I wanna make sure that I share everything that, um, that I'd like to share with you. One reason why I had surgery now is that I was about to turn 40, so I turned 40 in August and um, had surgery a couple weeks beforehand. And I knew that it was very likely that if I had successful LASIK, um, even if I had perfect vision anyway, the doctor said that between 40 and 55, most people will need reading glasses, and I wanted to give myself um, the chance to have freedom from glasses for at least a few years. So. I wanted to get it done now. Actually, I wanted to get it done sooner, but I wasn't a candidate until the newest technology came out. So that's the other reason why I had it now. I had to wait until the laser was, um, the technology was good enough to cover my astigmatism and also because I had very dry eyes. So all those things put together, that's why I waited until now and, and why I had it done when I did. So I'm going to share with you tips to prepare for surgery, um, to follow during surgery, and then also after surgery. So the first thing is I live alone, and if you live alone, um, the, the best thing to do would be to arrange to have someone be with you. Um, I could have done that, but I didn't really think it was necessary. Um, of course, after surgery and getting home, I wish I had had someone with me. So if you can have someone be with you at least for the first probably 10 hours, I would recommend it. It's, it's really nice to have somebody who can help you. But if not, um, then certainly arrange for rides. But as far as preparing your home, I really would recommend having water, um, lots of Kleenex or tissue, and some kind of pain reliever next to your bed or your couch, wherever you're going to rest. Because for me, um, it was much more painful than I had expected. It was, it was excruciating, to be honest, for the first six hours. Um, it, of course, got much better after that, but six hours is a long time to be in pain. And uh, I did not plan ahead to have ibuprofen next to my bed, so I actually had to use my cell phone as a flashlight because that's the other piece. Um, your eyes will be very sensitive to light, and mine were much more sensitive than I'd expected. So um, I tried to black out all the light that I could, and then I really wanted some pain reliever, and I had friends who I could have called or sent a text message to, Unfortunately, I could not see because my eyes were watering so much. So my my plans um, did not go as well as I had hoped. So what ended up happening is I used my cell phone as a flashlight because I knew I had ibuprofen in the center console of my car. And I held my hand over my eyes like this and used the cell phone to guide me into my garage kept my eyes closed and then fished around in my center console to find the ibuprofen. So at the time, you know, I knew it would be funny eventually, but it wasn't very funny that day because uh, I was in a lot of pain. You know, for me it was like onions had been cut and the juice had been poured straight into my eyes and it was um, much worse than any kind of sensitivity I had experienced with onions before. So, FYI, it might be more painful than you expect, and uh, you might be more sensitive to light than you expect. So to prepare your space, have Kleenex, water, some kind of pain reliever. Um, plan meals ahead if you can, if you live by yourself. I wish I had had um, two days worth of meals because for me, I, I didn't really get any rest until midnight. Um, my surgery was at 8 in the morning. I didn't really get any sleep until midnight because I just wasn't comfortable and I was in a lot of pain. So um, that would be another piece to prepare meals ahead of time. And then block out as much light as you can. So my eyes were extremely sensitive to light. That only lasted the first 24 hours. 
thankfully. So within 24 hours, I was able to, um, you know, I didn't open up my curtains, but they weren't, it wasn't painful to have light coming underneath my curtains, whereas it was very painful um, the day of surgery. So let's talk about surgery. So I, I checked in at the surgery center. Um, they had me rest and take some relaxation pill. I think it might have been Valium. I don't know. But it wasn't very strong. Didn't really have a huge effect, which was fine because I wasn't really nervous. But uh, during the first procedure, so intralace LASIK uses two lasers, the first laser creates the flap. Here's big tip number one. Keep both eyes open during that first laser. I don't know why it didn't occur to me to keep both eyes open um, until the third try, but I didn't, and that caused me some problems. So what they do is they put a suction ring on the white part of the eye. And then the laser comes down and docks on that suction ring and pushes against your eye. For me, it was quite uncomfortable. It wasn't painful, but it was just, it's just weird. It, it's kind of creepy to feel that much pain, uh, um, pressure on your eye. And then my vision went black, which is typical. So you're supposed to keep your eye perfectly still, but you can't see. And I was not able to keep my eye perfectly still. So as a, a safety mechanism, if you move your eye even a tiny amount, the laser turns off and the suction breaks. That's a good thing. The problem is then they reapply the suction and the laser comes down again and pushes against your eye again. And I actually broke suction twice before I finally figured out to keep my other eye open. So if you can use your free eye to focus, it really helps. And as soon as I figured that out, I was didn't have any trouble and the, the, the flap was made successfully and then with the second eye there was no problem at all. A consequence for me in breaking suction twice is that the white part of my right eye was completely red, like purple red. It was very gory looking for um, six weeks actually. It took six weeks for it to completely clear. And if I can figure out how to add photos to the end of this video, I will show you what my eyes looked like right after surgery and then a few days after. And I, I chronicled, with just with my cell phone actually, took pictures of my eyes in the morning so that I could watch the progress. This is a picture of the shield so that you can see what they looked like. They were actually pretty comfortable. And this is a picture of my right eye. You can see how swollen and red it was. It was very painful, very uncomfortable. And this is three days after surgery. You can see lots of bruising still, and actually my eye was still swollen. I could feel it against my eyelids. And now, three weeks after surgery, it was getting much, much better, um, but it did take about six weeks to reach this stage um, when my eyes are comfortable and clear and everything is great.